That's second video for lesson 6.4, side-side-side similarity theorem and side-angle-side similarity theorem. So we're just going to do some examples here. I've got, I think, three of each uh, type of theorem. Okay, so let's take a look at these. Once again, copy the picture down, get it onto your paper. If you want to try it on your own, um, go right ahead. The first one, you just want to follow along with me and then try maybe number two and number three on your own. That would be fine as well. All right, so here we go. Are these triangles similar? Okay, remember, side, 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 similarity theorem says all three sets of sides have to be proportional. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up that proportion. Okay, we're going to use all three sets of sides. Main thing is you've got to think about which sides go together. Now, I drew this one a little bit different, so you've got to think about it. So easiest way to do this, small with small, medium with medium, big with big. Okay, so what's the smallest one over here? Well, it's definitely the 8, right? So let's go 8 over, what's the smallest one over here? 8 over 4. Okay. Next one, let's go medium. So medium here would be 12. Medium over here, 6. Okay, biggest one over here, 14. Biggest one over here, 7. And you notice we kept this triangle in the numerator every single time, this triangle in the denominator every single time. Okay. If you did this in the numerator and this in the denominator, that's fine. You just need to stay consistent. Now, what we're going to check, we're going to check to see if these are equal. So I, I usually put a little question mark here because I don't technically know if they're equal yet. Okay? You don't have to put the question mark, but that's what we're checking. There's two ways you can do this. Number one, you can reduce all of the fractions. Okay? You can reduce them. Secondly, you can cross multiply. Okay, so either way is fine. I'm going to show you both. Okay, so let's say that we reduce. What does 8 over 4 reduce to? Well, that's not too difficult. It's 2 over 1, right? What does 12 over 6 reduce to? Well, it's also 2 over 1. What does 14 over 7 reduce to? Well, that's also 2 over 1. Well, there we go. Every single fraction has the same ratio. They're proportional. Now, keep in mind, this is the scale factor, 2 over 1. All right? So, are the triangles similar? Yes. Why? Side, side, side similarity theorem. All three sets of sides are proportional. They all reduce to the same thing. Now, like I said, the other thing you can do is you can cross multiply. So let's look at this. What we're going to do is we're going to ignore this part right here, the 14 over 7, and we're just going to cross multiply these. 8 times 6 is 48. 4 times 12 is 48. That checks. Okay, now we're going to ignore the 8 over 4. 12 times 7 is 84. 6 times 14 is 84. That checks. Now, you can ignore the 12 over 6 as well. 8 times 7 is 56. 4 times 14 is 56. Technically, you don't need to. Once I know these are equal, this is actually true, 48 equals 48. And then once I know these are equal, 84 equals 84, the transitive property would link up 8 over 4 with 14 over 7. So you can check all three. You really just need to check two of them, two sets, because then the transitive property gives you the third set anyways. Okay, so either way, cross-multiplying or reducing. Either way is going to work. The answer to this one is yes, they are similar because of the side-side-side similarity theorem. Okay, let's look at a second example. So let's pick up the pace a little bit if we can. All right, now this one's a little, actually, hold on, back up. I want you to be able to name the similar triangles as well. Sorry, I forgot that. I didn't write it down, but I want you to be able to name them. So let's think about that. Triangle ABC is similar to. Now, AB is the shortest side, and then BC is the longest side. So I want to follow that order. So when I went AB short, BC long, I need to think about that. Well, obviously, JL is the shortest. So the question is, do I go LJK or do I do JLK? Well, remember, I got to finish with the longest side. BC was the longest. So... 7 is the longest, so I need to go JLK as I finish this off. Okay, I want you to be able to do that. It's going to be in your homework, it's going to be on quizzes and tests and so on, so you got to be able to do that. All right, let's look at this one. Copy it down. The question's the same. Are the sides, are the triangles similar? So I want you to check to see if they're similar. If they are, I want you to write out the similarity statement. Okay, I want you to tell me the triangles in a proper order. All right, so go ahead and try this one on your own. Pause the video, come back and then I'll show you how you should have done it. All right, here we go. So 
I'm gonna use this triangle, I'm gonna put this triangle in the numerator every single time and this triangle in the denominator every single time. The thing that's a little confusing is the 12. It goes with both triangles actually. However, how do I know where it goes? Remember, short, medium, and long. So 12 is the shortest in this triangle. It's gotta go over nine in this triangle. Okay, medium, 16. Remember I use that little question mark. Medium over here, 12. And I'm gonna check the third one, long, 20, long, 15. Now once again, you can reduce. So 12 over nine reduces to four over three. 16 over 12 reduces to four over three. 20 over 15 reduces to four over three. Okay, they're all the same. That's my scale factor. It tells me my triangles are similar. If you chose to cross multiply instead, that's fine. Let's do some cross multiplying here. So 12 times 12 is 144. 9 times 16 is 144, that checks. Okay, remember I was ignoring this. Okay, now I'm gonna ignore this. All right, so 16 times 15 is 240. 12 times 20 is 240, that checks. This number doesn't need to equal this number. Okay, that's fine. All right, I don't need to check 12 over nine and 20 over 15 because of the transitive property. If I did, it's okay. 12 times 15 is 180. Nine times 20 is 180, it's still gonna check. All right, so these triangles are similar. Let's name them. So let's name this left one. So I've got maybe WXZ. WXZ is similar to, now, the way I just named it, I went medium to small. Okay, see how I did that? WXZ is medium to small. So now this one, I gotta go medium to small. So I gotta go 12 to nine. So Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, all right? So we got one more for side, side, side similarity theorem for an example, and then we'll do side, angle, side. Copy them down real quick. This one's a little bit harder because we've got decimals. Um, I think I talked to you guys in class about how to reduce decimals. If you don't remember that, make sure you pay close attention. All right, but go ahead and copy that down. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go small over small, medium over medium, big over big. So 10, smallest one, over 7.2. Equals, and I got a question mark here. Remember, you don't have to put it, I just put it there because I'm really not sure if they're equal. All right, medium 12, medium 9.6. And then finally, big and big, 20 and 16. Okay, I left myself a little bit of room on this paper so I can show you how to reduce these. Remember, when we have decimals, the easiest thing to do is to move the decimal over one place. And I gotta do that in both parts of the fraction. So when I move the decimal for the 10 over one place, I actually get 100 over 72. I get 120 over 96. Now here, I don't have to move the decimal. There is no decimal, so 20 over 16. So let's reduce these. This is divisible by four. So 25 over 18. This is divisible by 12. Might even be more than that, let's see. 12 would give me 10 over eight. Yep, I can go farther, all the way to five over four. This is still 25 over 18. This reduces to five over four. Okay, so I got them all reduced. Well, these are equal, but these aren't equal over here. So, are the triangles similar? No, two sets of sides is not enough, unless I have an angle. And look back up here, we don't have an angle. There's no congruent angles marked. Okay, so I only have two sets of sides. No, the triangles are not similar. Now remember, the other thing you can do is cross multiply. So if I cross multiplied here, I'd get 96. 12 times 7.2, I'm gonna write that off to the side, is 86.4. Well, those aren't equal. As Soon as I get not equal, I can stop, I'm done. Now, I could check over here, 12 times 16, that's 192. 20 times 9.6, that's 192. But if you get one that's equal and one that's not, then not all three sets of sides are proportional. So no, these triangles are not proportional. Since they're not proportional, I don't wanna write out the triangles. Okay, so I don't need to bother with that. All right, let's look at some examples for side angle side. Okay, I got a, three of these as well. All right, so copy down the picture, side angle side similarity theorem examples. We got this, are the triangles similar? Now you'll notice I don't have the third side. Okay, I only have two sides. So remember, I have to check to see if they're proportional, but I need a congruent angle. If I don't have a congruent angle, having proportional sides doesn't matter at all. All right, so do I have any congruent angles in here? Well, think about what you know. We do, we've got this angle congruent to this angle by vertical angle theorem. 
Okay, so now I'm going to check to see if the sides are proportional. Remember, make sure you go small over small and big over big. So 8 doesn't go with 21. 8 goes with 14. So 8 over 14, me, or big, there's not really a medium in here. I just have two numbers, so we'll just go big over big, 12 over 21. Let's cross multiply it. 8 times 21 is 168. 12 times 14 is 168. If you wanted to reduce instead, 8 over 14 divided by 2, you get 4 over 7. 12 over 21 divided by 3, you get 4 over 7. It works. You don't have to do both of these. You just need to do one of them. Now, we got two sets of proportional sides. We have an angle. It's the included angle, so the order is correct. The angle is congruent. So, yes, side angle side similarity theorem. Now, let's name the triangles. So, let's go with M and Q on this one. M and Q is similar to. Now, I went small to big. So here, to go small to big, we got to go P and O. P and O. All right? Let's look at the next one. So copy the picture down. Question's kind of out of the bottom here. Are these triangles similar? So make sure you go ahead and try to check to see if these triangles are similar. All right? Copy that down and then check to see if the triangles are similar. All right, you should have paused the video, tried it on your own. Let's see what we came up with. So, if I go with my proportion, all right, in this case, small over small is 8 over 16. I can fit that right in here. 9 over 18. If I reduce, I get 1 half. If I reduce here, I get 1 half. 8 times 18 is 144 if you did the cross multiplying. 9 times 16 is also 144. So the sides are working. Let's check the angles. 30 degrees, 60 degrees. Wait, hold on. Something's wrong. The angles are supposed to be what? The angles are supposed to be congruent. These angles aren't congruent. Since the angles aren't congruent, our answer is no. Okay, if it asks you to explain why, you would say the angles are not congruent. All right? Don't make it complicated. All right, side angle side, I need two sets of proportional sides and the included angle must be congruent. Okay, we don't have that here. The reason I did this one the way I did it, if you double the 9, you get to the 18. If you double the 8, you get to the 16. If you double the 30, you get to the 60. You're never allowed to double the angle or triple the angle or cut the angle in half. The angle must be congruent, not proportional. All right, last example. So here we go. Are the triangles similar? Well, let's check the angle right away because if I don't have a congruent angle, the rest doesn't really matter. So right angle, right angle. Right angle and congruence theorem. Okay, we definitely have congruent angles. All right, so now, small over small, 9 over 5.4 equals big over big, 15 over 9. Are they actually equal? Well, let's cross multiply. 9 times 9 is 81. 15 times 5.4, 81. Checks. If you wanted to reduce instead, remember how to do a decimal. Let's practice that real quick. 9 over 5.4. 15 over 9, I change this to 90 over 54 and 15 over 9. These are both divisible by 3, that's a pretty easy one, it gives me 5 over 3. These ones are divisible by 9, it gives me 10 over 6. Then I would divide by 2 and get 5 over 3 equals 5 over 3 and it checks. Okay, so you can do the cross multiplying or you can do this. The only nice thing about this, it takes a little longer, but it does give you your scale factor. Okay, so are the triangles similar? Yes, let's name them. So I'm gonna go with JKL real quick. Is similar to, JKL I went big to small. Okay, so on this I need to go big to small. So which one's bigger? Nine point, or the nine is bigger than the 5.4. So I'm gonna go TSU. And that's it. We are done with lesson 6.4 examples different types of theorems, okay? Make sure you come to class ready to go, and then we'll have the 6.5 video in a little bit as well.